Hello. There's much happening in the world and much happening for us in uh, Melbourne and many of the parishes of the Diocese of Melbourne. Some a little bit outside of it that are not as uh, pressured with the restrictions that we're facing in our response to the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, mostly they are. And uh, one of those will be the familiarity of wearing uh, masks and uh, We've been doing that in lots of contexts already, but uh, generally anywhere out in public. Now this is going to be a requirement uh, in the hope that this is uh, some effect of uh, lessening the impact of uh, coronavirus uh, spread throughout the community. I wanted to uh, share with you something I thought that was quite encouraging and cheerful. Um, I have two certificates of appreciation that were um, uh, sent through to us. Uh, I've received on on uh, behalf of us all for uh, the work of four of our military chaplains during the time of the bushfires. Uh, they um, parish clergy mostly uh, and worked as reserve chaplains but were involved in the uh, work uh, responding to the bushfire crisis so it's a, a generous appreciation from the uh, people in the Defence Force for uh, the diocese encouraging that ministry and releasing its clergy for that work. So I'm um, grateful for them and uh, grateful for the encouragement that their parishes uh, give those who are in Defence Force chaplaincy the opportunities of serving in that way because we know that uh, quite often the um, resources of our community are at overload and uh, these other resources need to be brought in and uh, I know how important that ministry has been during uh, that earlier crisis in the year. and. Uh, uh, who knows where uh, any of our chaplains might be called to serve in uh, matters as they unfold. I felt particularly uh, uh, heavy this morning with uh, the news I've heard of um, so many nursing homes where there seems to be um, COVID-19 infections. I think it was you know, well, well over 30, perhaps closer to 40 nursing homes. And I know that for many of us, we have a ministry to um, people who are in those nursing homes who are family members or parishioners uh, just generally a chaplaincy to the nursing home community and I just think what a, a, an anxious time this must be, what a vulnerable time for people who are there with uh, all of their needs of care uh, being looked to to the nursing home to rely on and, and then with this infection and we've uh, tragically seen the death of a number of people in their uh, 80s and uh, older years in recent days so I, I do feel this is a weighty thing and I know that many of our clergy will be um, somewhat limited in what ministry they can have amongst people in uh, nursing homes at this time because of the greater restrictions for the sake of trying to prevent uh, infection spreading. But it's one of the uh, I think very painful things of this time, the uh, limited opportunities that we have in, in some of these most powerful times of um, life transitions, our ageing as we approach death and then people's death and then as we have always done, gathered uh, for a funeral, for burials, for cremations, that uh, these opportunities have been quite shrunk down and even more so in the, in, in the recent uh, restrictions. And so it is a, is a weighty thing and I um, do pray that people who are responding to grief can have some uh, healing journey through that time of grief because I think it is very difficult when it feels a bit disembodied when you're um, engaging with uh, the death of someone you've known and, and valued at a distance or just through virtual means as much as we want to offer a ministry of uh, live streaming and uh, other aspects um, there is uh, there is nothing like the physicality of being in, in the place where that, where that person's uh, dead body lies as we pray in uh, this last act that we can do for them in this mortal life for God's mercies to be with them in eternity. So it's um, a lot of things happening that I'm, I'm sure people are experiencing in, in pastoral ministry around the diocese. So uh, I do pray that um, there will be opportunities despite these profound restrictions for uh, good opportunities of ministry and for helping uh, connect people to the, the healing mercies of Christ in uh, times of much uncertainty and much pain. I've um, continued with some of my uh, Zoom conferences with uh, the different archdeaconries and it's been encouraging just to hear the uh, 
the way in which clergy in our diocese are responding with a really unique uh, initiative uh, in many situations that they're encountering and um, are trying to find that balance between uh, all the things that are imaginable to do and what, what can happen that will be uh, constructive and make a difference. And some have really gone to, uh, to great extents and I'm really admiring of our clergy in the diocese for all of their perseverance, for all of their drawing into uh, deeply into the heart of the, the, the spiritual gifts that we even received as they carry out their responsibilities in the life of uh, their parishes as they are able in amongst the people that they can uh, contact at that time. So uh, m m many things happening. Uh, we haven't uh, apparently turned any corner yet, but we do continue to pray that the measures that uh, have been put in place will be effective in reducing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, still seeing numbers in the, in the hundreds of new infections each day and uh, uh, the rates haven't uh, escalated in that kind of vertical axis of um, exponential growth, but they're still concerning and uh, almost that anxiety that there is a, uh, a trigger point where things could easily get away uh, very badly uh, in uh, our city and in the state of Victoria generally and probably nationally, uh, because we know that it, it is so easy for uh, this virus to be um, spread and um, especially as people start in many other parts of the country uh, moving and traveling, uh, there will be a much higher risk of uh, people who haven't uh, been aware that they're carrying the virus, transmitting it to others. Uh, I was just reading in the Book of Common Prayer something which I thought also thought was quite uh, good to share. This is a service we probably, I've, n I've never used pastorally, but it's set down for um, the beginning of Lent, uh, uh, a commination, which is a denunciation of, um, of, of sins and sinners. But the, the last uh, prayer, on the, uh, as it concludes, I thought is worth sharing with you this morning. And it's in the language of the Book of Common Prayer, as you'd expect. Uh, turn thou us, O good Lord, and so we shall be turned. Be favourable, O Lord, be favourable to thy people, who turn to thee in weeping, fasting, and praying. For thou art a merciful God, full of compassion, long-suffering, and of great pity. Thou sparest when we deserve punishment, and in thy wrath thinkest upon mercy. Spare thy people, good Lord, spare them, and let not thine heritage be brought to confusion. Hear us, O Lord, for thy mercy is great, and after the multitude of thy mercies look upon us through the merits and mediation of thy blessed Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's um, a very practical application of that truth of the times of our deepest need, if we uh, make our journey into the awareness of the heart of God, that we uh, don't just see those things which are adverse to us, but we see the great mercy and pity um, of God at work uh, in our lives and in our world. So I pray that you might have that reassurance. I pray that you might be strengthened and blessed and that God might watch over you in every way as you continue uh, in these extraordinary times to carry the wonderful and life-giving and most extraordinary message of the incarnation of the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord, to a world with many needs. God bless you and keep you. Amen.